I'm telling you right now, I believe that people can receive impartation. Now, let me tell you the prophetic word that, that Wendy gave me to those watching. And this is this is why I believe tomorrow night's meeting. If you live in you live what you're watching me on the internet and you're local and you can be here, something not. Listen to this. The Lord just spoke to me and said, This is what will happen tomorrow night. The king and the king's anointing falls tomorrow night. The 8th of June, the anointing of the king of glory falls. Jesus said, I am coming in person. People like him are giving false prophecies to people. Did you catch the people? Did you see him in the audience? They were cheering him on. The sad part of it is, these people are being deceived and they're chewing it up. Now here, herein lies probably most, if not all, the problem. These people don't read the scriptures, or they haven't read them. They're not in the word, they have been in the word. They're deceived, they're it's a blind leading the blind. That's the kind of nonsense that happens when you don't have an idea and knowledge of the scriptures. you got to know what's in God's word. There are thousands and thousands of people under, uh, under you know, hundreds of different false teachers, false prophets, probably thousands, you know, false pastors under false teachings, under false religious systems. I mean, it goes on and on. Well, I was going to say something, but that's another video. Catch the rest of this. I said, God, I prayed for like a hundred crippled people, not one. He said, that's because I want you to grab that lady's crippled legs and bang them up and down on the platform like a baseball bat. I walked up and I grabbed her legs and I started going, Bing! I started banging them up and down on the pot. She got healed. And I'm thinking, God, why is not the power of God moving? He said, because you haven't kicked that woman in the face. And there's this older lady worshiping right in front of the platform. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face. With your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. BAM! And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. And I saw him and the gift of faith came on me. I said, what do I do, God? And God told me to just run him down. So I jumped up in the air and I went, BAM! And I hit him to the ground, jumped onto him and got into a full mount. Ground and pound. I jumped on it and I was in a full mount. And something came over me, and instead of punching him, I grabbed him by the neck and started choking him. And I said, come out of him, devil! Come out of him, devil! And I was in another meeting one time, and I called out this Chinese gentleman. And all of a sudden, I went running down the aisle, and I, I hit this guy so hard, it drove him back several feet. He hit the ground, and his tooth popped right out of his mouth. 
the pastor was lying on the floor. And I was standing up on the platform and I said, God, I want revival. And he said these words to me. Leg drop the pastor. Leg drop the pastor. Leg drop the pastor. No, it's not under... It's not under leg. Maybe it's under Greco-Roman wrestling moves in my concordance. Leg drop the pastor. I said, what? He said, leg drop the pastor. Well, that uh, false prophet, false teacher, false parent false pastor should have been uh, pretty easy to spot. There is nowhere in scripture where you hurt anybody or inflict any kind of physical pain or rough anybody up for them to get healed. Uh, the ones that were given the gift of healing, they simply said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Or in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed. And they got up and walked and they were healed. You know, this next one, you know, uh, which is going to be of Joel Osteen, is a, a little bit harder to spot for some people because it's more of a, of a humble, soft-spoken, non-biblical. I want to talk to you today about living in total victory. A little over 2,000 years ago, they crucified Jesus on the cross. They put him in the grave and they thought that was the end of it. But thank God, on the third day, he arose. He said, because I live, you shall live also. He wasn't talking about just breathing. He was talking about living an abundant life. Not a barely get by life. Not a life filled with bad habits and addictions and lack and mediocrity. No, because of the price he paid, we have a right to live in total victory. I want you to get that down on the inside. Not partial victory to where we have a good family, we have good health, but we constantly struggle in our finances. That's not total victory. If God did it for you in one area, He can do it for you in another area. Get a vision for it. Don't get stagnant. Maybe God's blessed you, and you have a good family, a good job, but you've had pain in your body for years and years. You used to stand against it. You used to believe you could be free, but now it's been so long, you just decided, this is my lot in life. Joel, I guess this is my cross to carry. He has paid the price so that we may be totally free. That means free from bad habits and addictions, free from fear and worry, free from discouragement and depression, free from poverty and lack, free from low self-esteem. You need to start seeing yourself the right way. You are not a sick person trying to get well. You are a well person fighting off sickness. God made you healthy and whole. And the scripture says in Ephesians 1 verse 4, Long before God laid down earth's foundation, He had us on His mind. Because of the sacrifice Christ made, we are a free people. And not just barely free, but abundantly free. One translation says, unquestionably free. I like that phrase, before God created the world, He was thinking about us. If you're going to be free, you need to know who you are. You're not just anybody, you're a child of the Most High God. He has breathed His very life into you. You have His royal blood flowing through your veins. It's the blood of a champion. You're not ordinary, you come from great stock. Your Heavenly Father spoke the worlds into existence. Long before you ever got here, He was thinking about you. And let me assure you, He didn't create you to be average. He didn't create you to barely get by, to have all kinds of things holding you back. You've got to get the right vision. God created you to be totally free, to have peace in your mind, to walk in divine health, to have good relationships, to have plenty to pay your bills. God created us as victors and not victims. A few weeks ago there was an event here at Dodger Stadium with Joel Osteen. 
35,000 people at Dodger Stadium, something like that. Um, he is now the largest quote unquote church, uh, using the word loosely, in America, down in Houston. Um, you need to understand that he is a pagan religionist in every sense. He's a quasi pantheist. Jesus is a footnote that satisfies his critics and deceives his followers. The idea of his whole thing is that men have the power in themselves to change their lives. In his definitive book, Your Best Life Now, he says, and that ought to be a dead giveaway, since the only way this could be your best life is if you're going to hell. He says, that anyone can create by faith and words the dreams he desires. Here's another quote. All of us are born for earthly greatness. You were born to win. Win what? God wants you to live in abundance. You were born to be a champion. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. Before we were formed, He prepared us to live abundant lives, to be happy, healthy, and whole. But when our thinking becomes contaminated, it's no longer in line with God's Word. And quote, By the way, God's Word is not the Bible. God's Word is that Word that comes to us mystically, spiritually, that tells us what we should want. Here's another quote. Get your thinking positive and He will bring your desires to pass. He regards you as a strong, courageous, successful person. You're on your way to a new level of glory. Hmm. How do you get there? Believe, he says, visualize, and speak out loud. Same exact approach. Words release your power. Words give life to your dreams. Here's another quote. Friend, there's a miracle in your mouth. I think Isaiah might object to that. I said I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. Here's Joel Osteen's prayer. I thank you, Father, that I have your favor. Wow. Did he meet the Pharisee in Luke 18 or what? I thank you that I'm not like other people. Here's another quote. I know these principles are true because they work for me and my wife. Oh, so that's the test of truth. Are you kidding? I know these things are true because they work for me and my wife. Sure, you're at the top of the Ponzi scheme. Now, this next one is going to be a clip of John Hagee, uh, you know, saying that uh, Jesus didn't come to earth to be the Messiah. The scriptures call him the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And I was, I was disappointed when I found this out because I used to, you know, take the time out to watch his sermons on TV. Is he, to me at the time, he seemed to have some intelligent things to say. And um, after this, see for yourself. I'm delighted to present my latest book, In Defense of Israel. This book will expose the sins of the fathers and the vicious abuse of the Jewish people. In Defense of Israel will shape Christian theology. It scripturally proves that the Jewish people as a whole did not reject Jesus as Messiah. It will also prove that Jesus did not come to earth to be the Messiah. It will prove that there was a Calvary conspiracy between Rome, the high priest and Herod to execute Jesus as an insurrectionist too dangerous to live. Since Jesus refused by word and deed to claim to be the Messiah, how can the Jews be blamed for rejecting what was never offered? Discover how to love yourself in a healthy, balanced way. Improve your self-image. Experience the freedom to develop your talents and abilities. Get rid of rejection and fear and step into a brand new life that you love. You need to shake off all that wrong self-image and you need to say, Here I am, God, you've blessed me. Woo! Woo! Right here, God, here I am. Woo -hoo! And I believe when somebody doesn't like themselves, it's equivalent to being emotionally ill. So if you don't like yourself, you are in for one miserably wretched life. How many of you?
you can use life in yourself a little bit better. I mean, seriously, how many of you know that you maybe got kind of a bad attitude toward yourself and you need to come up higher and how you feel about yourself? But in the world that we live in today, don't you sometimes feel like that there's always this vague little message that you're just not quite what you ought to be? Anybody feel that pressure? You know, it's like, you know, look the way the models do on the magazine, and you know, this, this, that, that, and something else. And so, like, everybody wants the nines and tens, but nobody's looking for the twos and threes and fours. And everybody can be a nine or a ten if you will just concentrate on what you're already naturally gifted for. I want to go shopping and eat out. I mean, I couldn't care less about. I want to make my clothes. I want to buy them. I don't want to can my vegetables. I want to go to a good restaurant and sit down and have somebody wait on me. Hallelujah. But you know, the world is not lining up to spend money to get fours. I am going to find out what God has for me, and I am going to do it with all of my heart. To love your neighbor as you do yourself. Register today for the 2007 Joyce Meyer Ministries Women's Convention, featuring T.D. Jakes, Christine Kane, and Joyce Meyer. With do you know something? The minute that blood sacrifice was accepted, Jesus was the first human being that was ever born again. And it was sealed. I mean, it happened when he was in hell. Oh, they were having the biggest party that never been had. They had my Jesus in the floor, and they were standing on his back, jumping up and down and laughing. And he had become sin. Don't you think that God was pacing, wanting to put a stop to what was going on? All the hosts of hell were up on him. Up on him. Up on him. The angels are in agony. All the creation is groaning. All the host of hell was upon him. Up on him. They got on him. They got him down in the floor and got on him. And they were laughing and mocking. Ah ha 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 ha. You trusted God and look where you ended up. You thought he'd save you and get you off that cross. He didn't. Ha, ha, ha. Now I want you to just stand still in the presence of God for just a minute. has cleverly deceived people into thinking and saying that the Bible is the Word of God. It's not the Word of God, my friend. It is the Word of men who have met with God. That is what the Holy Scriptures are. It is what people wrote who had a meeting with God, who have heard from God. It is what people have wrote regarding God, but it's not the Word of God. Because now people believe that if they've got a Bible, they've got the Word of God, they don't need Jesus. So I don't think that you've got a book that is maybe called the Word of God, which is a lie. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. 
if you want to know the truth, and if you want to know the Word of God, you've got to get to know Jesus, my friend. You've got to be led by His Holy Spirit. You cannot be led by a book. That book was read, written by people who knew God, who had seen the works of God. It is not the Word of God, my friend. You've been deceived. Get to know the Word of God, Jesus Christ. Invite Him into your life and He will reveal Himself to you and you will hear the Word of God. God never wrote, my friend. People write. They wrote the truth. They wrote about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will confirm to you what they write. But it's not the Word of God. Jesus Christ. I had somebody comment on one of my videos. He was saying that you need to know the Bible and then also you're going to know Jesus. No, my friend. No, no, no. You don't need to know the Bible. You don't need to know the Bible. You need to know Jesus. Seek the book of the Lord and read. They had time for Bibles and books and videos and fellowship and the past and the church, but they didn't have time for Jesus. Did you have time for Jesus? Went in front of him, guided him. Where did you go? They were not guided by the knowledge of the scriptures. The people with the scriptures were those who crucified Jesus Christ. The apostles read scriptures, they had scriptures. In fact, Paul was a Pharisee and he knew the scriptures. But the Pharisees, they didn't understand the scriptures. They didn't see the light through in the scriptures because their hearts were hardened. That's also in scripture. So if you read the book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah reveals to you that the Lord directly dictated the words that he wrote down in scripture. And at one point he brought it to a king. The king hated it, ripped it up, burned it, and uh, he wrote it again. And, um, you know, so, you know, there's hundreds of prophecies in the Bible. None of those, none of those servants of, or, or children of God did that on their own. Um, that was all, that's supernaturally done. Um, and I can give you a personal testimony. I was sitting in my bed one night, and the Lord, or either the Lord himself or, or through an angel or any, either way it came from the Lord, used me like a puppet, like controlled my body, had me pick up uh, the Bible. I picked up the Bible, the New Testament, and I opened it up, and as soon as I opened it up, the pages were glowing. And I began to read while the pages were glowing. And I started to read. And as soon as I started think, trying to think about with human understanding or something like that, what I was reading, the, the miracle stopped and went away. The scriptures are completely legitimate. You can go through, you can go to my website, holyghostbaptism.org. You can, if you, if you poke around on there, and, or you look up Kent Hovind, or you look up, you know, there's uh, all the prophecies being fulfilled in the past year. Um, the, <laughs> it says, seek the book of the Lord and read. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Um, all, all scripture is God-breathed, given by inspiration of God. Um, those scriptures are divinely inspired, and they come from the Lord. Uh, th this guy is telling people to, to forsake the word of God. That's really dangerous. Uh, this guy is a false teacher. And uh, the, the, the upsetting part about it is there's probably a thousand or more people that watch his videos, and there's people that support that. Why they're supporting someone who's obviously uh, uh, doing false teaching, you know, I have no idea, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I can tell you the scriptures are completely legitimate. Uh, you can look up Hosea chapter 4 with all the birds and the fish tying. You can YouTube that. You can you can Google that. You you can yeah, <laughs> scientists try to come up with these clever explanations as to what happened to them all over the world. <laughs> they're not getting it right. Um, you can look up what happened with the Egypt in Isaiah 19. Uh, you can see what's going on in the world with Israel right now and and, and and Syria and look up you know the Psalm 83 war, Ezekiel 38, 39, the Gog and Magog war. And I, I mentioned to Syria, uh, Assyria, uh, uh, Isaiah 17:1. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it talks about uh, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city. It will be a ruinous heap. That's never happened before in all of history. Not to my knowledge. That will happen. You know, and there's evidence of uh, the, what's left over of Noah's Ark uh, out there. And um, 
There's also evidence of uh, the chariot wheels from uh, in the, under the, uh, uh, on the bottom of the Red Sea where God had parted the sea and he had caused their chariot wheels to come off and he had uh, enclosed the waters over the uh, Egyptian army and uh, killed them. You know, there's evidence for that. They found they recently found those 70 books that uh, seemingly coincide with the scriptures. Um, and uh, they, you know, they've also found evidence of uh, what's left over of Sodom and Gomorrah. There was actually sulfur there, uh, fire and brimstone. You know, that's sulfur. And they actually found the sulfur in this ash city, and they burnt it on a spoon. What was left over of the sulfur, and it burned so hot, it burned a hole through the spoon. You know. If you if if you look hard enough and you read the word enough, you'll find your confirmation. You know, and then the, or the, there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. There was one in uh, recently one in Oklahoma. That's a diverse place. Uh, what was it, Virginia or whatever? So, you know, you guys know where it was. But there was recently in this past year, in the past few months, two diverse earthquakes. Um, if you go to the website HolyGhostBaptism.org. You watch all the material on that. You look into all the references I just gave you, and if you still conclude that the that <laughs> the Bible is not the Word of God, you, <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know what else to tell you other than you're, you're just in complete denial and rejecting the truth, and the truth is probably not in you. But uh, if you're watching this, you know, you, you're probably interested in the truth. You're probably a believer, or you're probably looking to strengthen your faith. So, um, anyways, God bless. impartation. Now, let me tell you the prophetic word that, that Wendy gave me for those watching. And this is this is why I believe tomorrow night's meeting. If you live in you live what you're watching me on the internet and you're local and you got a great angel at home because the great honoring of the name of God, the King of Glory is coming to visit Lakeland to visit the revival, to visit the outpour. The devil trembles with that knowledge. For tomorrow the King of Glory sets foot upon the stage in divine, personal, one-to-one -one visitation. You know, it's bad enough that people like him are giving false prophecies to people. Did you catch the people? Did you see him in the audience? They were cheering him on. The sad part of it is, these people are being deceived and they're chewing it up. Now here, herein lies probably most, if not all, the problem. These people don't read the scriptures, or they haven't read them. They're not in the word, they have been in the word. They're deceived. They're the blind leading the blind. That's the kind of nonsense that happens when you don't have an idea and knowledge of the scriptures. you got to know what's in God's word. There are thousands and thousands of people under, uh, under, you know, hundreds of different false teachers, false prophets, probably thousands, f you know, false pastors under false teachings, under false religious systems. I mean, it goes on and on. Well, I was going to say something, but that's another video. Catch the rest of this. I said, God, I've prayed for like a hundred crippled people, not one. He said, that's because I want you to grab that lady's crippled legs and bang them up and down on the platform like a baseball bat. 
I walked up and I grabbed her legs and I started going, be healed, be healed. I started banging them up and down on the pot. She got healed. And I'm thinking, God, why is not the power of God moving? He said, because you haven't kicked that woman in the face. And there's this older lady worshiping right in front of the platform. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face. With your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. And I saw him and the gift of faith came on me. I said, what do I do, God? And God told me to just run him down. So I jumped up in the air and I went, bam! And I hit him to the ground, jumped onto him, and got into a full mount. Ground and pound. I jumped on it and I was in a full mount. And something came over me. And instead of punching him, I grabbed him by the neck and started choking him. And I said, come out of him, devil! Come out of him, devil! Now I said another meeting one time, and I called out this church. Be here, something not. Listen to this. The Lord just spoke to me and said, this is what will happen tomorrow night. The king and the king's anointing falls tomorrow night. The 8th of June, the anointing of the King of Glory falls. Jesus said, I am coming in person. The King is coming in person. I said so strongly there will be a personal divine visitation of the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the revival tomorrow night. He will come in the...